Hi guys, Samantha from Jessima Tutorials here and today I'm going to show you how to create a cute puffy donut uh, using some polymer clay, silk screens and alcohol ink. So you're going to need some white clay rolled out on a fairly thin setting. The thinner you can go the better. And then just take two pieces of paper and just give it a nice burnish because you want that surface to be nice and smooth. Okay. We've got a little bit of dirt on here but that's alright. Okay, I'm just going to show you the alcohol inks I'm using. I'm using a metallic gold. It can be any brand uh, that you're comfortable using. This is the one that I'm using. Then I'm using Pinata, uh, brown and blue. Again, it doesn't have to be any specific brand. You can use just any brown and blue you want. And then I have another metallic blue over here. Again, any brand you want. And also, you don't have to necessarily do the colors that I'm using today. So feel free to play around as you wish. Now I'm going to open up my two metallic colors. And I'm just doing that off to the side. I'm just going to drop them on like so. Okay. Then close them up because you don't want to accidentally uh, knock them. Just going to move this to the side for just the moment. I'm going to bring over an alcohol ink dabber and my two other colours. I'm going to open them away from the clay because I don't want any crusty alcohol bits getting onto the clay. And I'm just going to take that and I'm going to drop that on like so. I'm going to bring this over again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly blow to get this to these metallic bits to spread out. Okay, just a little bit. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to dab with my ink. So we've got nice big spots of metallic along with just dabs of other colour. Okay, there we go. Then close up your other alcohol inks and I want you to let that dry pretty well. So give it like, oh, I'd say a minute or two to dry and then we can move on to the next step. Okay, so I've left it for a little bit. Now I'm just going to bring over another piece of paper and I'm just going to burnish over the top. And this is mainly just to get rid of any uh, leftover ink that's wet. You can see a few spots where it was wet. And also it just burnishes any of those metallic particles onto the clay better. So that they don't get uh, picked up by our silk screen later. Okay, I'm just going to lift that. Okay. And you can see that it's going to lift up quite a bit. But that's pretty normal. And you can see also that I've transferred it onto a tile so that it's nice and stuck down. And so now we're ready to bring it over the silk screen. And the silk screen I've chosen is this kind of uh, music mix where it's got a bunch of different ways um, that music notes have been played around with. And this is the one that we are going to be using. So just grab that. And just position that on, and then gently burnish it into place. Just make sure that's well stuck on. And I'm going to be using some black acrylic paint. Just give it a good shake. And also, by getting rid of that excess ink with the paper, you're saving your silk screen from having the excess ink on it, which means that it's going to be much cleaner. Which is something that you want, because you, the less times you have to clean a silk screen of alcohol ink, the better. Because alcohol ink can be quite difficult to get out of a silk screen. There we go. Put to the side. And 
lift up and clean your screen. Okay, and there we go, it's completely dry. And I really like how this has come out. It kind of reminds me of a watercolour painting almost. Okay, so that's what we are going to be working with. Now I'm going to bring over the cutter that I'm using and I'm going to be using a rectangle, a um, rounded square donut with a nice small hole in the middle. Just going to grab this. I'm going to flip it onto its back. I'm just going to pop that over the top. Got to be very careful. I can see it. there's a little split there. If you can see any splits, you need to bring over some paper and you need to give it a burnish just to get the clay to stick together. Uh, because if there are any splits or weak points in this, that is going to hinder the process that we're about to do. So just make sure that you give this a really thorough burnish, getting that clay to all bond together. Okay, so I've burnished and I've checked. Should be good to go now. So there we are. I'm going to put that in here. I'm very carefully just going to bend it over the surface and I can see the crack there but that's because that's where the cutter is connecting and I'm actually purposefully pressing it onto the cutter to get it to hold its shape with these dips that I am creating. There we go. Then I'm going to do the same for this inside section. And I don't want to push it any more than that. So I'm just going to put that to the side for the moment. I have another piece of paper with the black that we're going to be using as a backing. Give this a burnish so that it's nice and smooth on the back and top. Okay, then we're going to bring this over and I'm just going to grab a grip of the cutter and I'm going to flip very carefully over and onto that black and I'm not going to press anything and I'm just going to cut with the cutter and lift let's see did that work I might not I haven't pressed into it very hard because I might want to flatten it because it can sometimes be difficult to get the puffy effect. So you can see there that it's a fairly um, low puff level. If you wanted more, the more you dip it into the cutter, the more puffy it will be. But the risk is that you will uh, create cracks on your clay, which can be difficult to manage. Um, so just keep that in mind. The more well conditioned your clay is, the softer your clay is, the more elastic your clay is, the better that is going to be. Now I'm going to actually cut this on the tile because the clay keeps sticking to my cutter. There we go. Okay, and I just want to get rid of this excess around the edges. I'm going to pick that up. It should not be stuck onto the tile. There we go. Move that out the way. And we have a clean piece. And now once this goes into the oven, you should find that the air puffs up a little bit more. So that is something to keep in mind. I'm just running my blade around the edge. Just to give it a nice clean finish. I'm going to put that to the side and we do have some clay left so the first thing to do is going to be to peel this up and because we didn't burnish it on or anything like that it should come off very cleanly and I want to make earrings with what's left over here okay so I'm just going to put this to the side and I'm going to bring over the black again and I've just shaped it and I 
to burnish it. And now I'm not going to be doing the exact same thing for the earrings just because the cut is going to be quite small and it'll be quite risky to do the hollow form if technique that I was showing. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use some cling wrap. So I'm just going to place that over the top and you can burnish it on this time around just so that it's well stuck. And then I've just got some clean wrap or glad wrap, just basically plastic that you usually cover food with, whatever, however you might call it. Just going to place that over the top like so and this will force it to create a bevel. Okay, so I'm using a rounded square donut 30, for the other one I used a rounded square donut 360. This one is quite a bit smaller as you can see. Okay, just busy deciding where I want to be. I'm going to press down, and you need to press down quite hard because you're forcing that clay to dome. There we go, you can see we get a nice light dome. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same for this one. Press down, force that clay to dome. Okay, yeah. then I want to lift up the plastic wrap and the cutters are so sharp that generally they'll cut straight through the wrap which is a good thing there we go and I'm just going to position this on again and just cut again so that you make sure that you get a nice clean cut okay. and you can see there's a bit of stuff in there we'll clean that out in a minute that's basically because we're cutting on paper and because we had the clean wrap over the top, it just means that the cutter has a little bit of a hard time cutting through all of that. Okay, so this this is going to stick in the cutter now, but that's fine. I'm going to cut on the, make sure to press on the inside bit as well, so you get rid of that. And then we're going to work that out of the cutter. I'm just going to use my little finger. There we go. Just to get it to pop out a little bit, and then because it's not really stuck in all that well. You should be able to easily peel that out with a much cleaner centre. Let's see this one. This one had a better cut. Then just run your fingers around the edge just to get rid of any fluffy bits. Like so. And there you've got two donuts that will match your uh, piece. You can even take these bits that you cut and you can add those onto the earrings if you want. I personally am not, but that's just something to keep in mind. You can always use your donut centers uh, as added bits if you want. Just giving this one over, and I'm going to move these over. There we go. And we will use those as earrings. And so I'm going to pop that into the oven at Primo's recommended temperature for a full hour. And then when they're done, we are going to give them a light sand, just clean up any little straggly bits left around the edges, uh, and then we're going to resin them. Okay, and here they are out of the oven, and I have cooled them off with some with a quick dip in some water. And so now I'm just going to bring over a 600 grit uh, sandpaper, just so that we can give the edges a clean. So all you're going to need to do is just gently sand up these edges, you don't have to go too hard on them, just so that it feels nice and smooth around the edges. Really that's all you need to do, you can see how quickly I'm going here. And I'm just going to use a 600, I don't think I need to go up a grip. Okay, just going to dip that in the water here so it's nice and clean. Then I'd also highly recommend going in the inside as well just to make sure that's nice and clean and then repeat for the earring pieces uh, and then make sure that it is completely dry before you move on to the next step because the next step is going to require resin and resin and water just don't mix well together there we go I'm just going to bring over a silicone mat 
and this just means that if we do get any resin spills it's not going to stick to the tile it will be, we'll be able to peel these up very easily because the resin does not stick to the silicone okay and I'm just going to take some nice UV resin here oh and here's the brand that I'm using I sell this on my Etsy shop if you're interested and I'm just going to brush that around. I've started off with less than I think I'm going to actually want. Just because I don't want to add too much. Because if you add too much, it runs over the sides. And then you've got a big mess. Which is just very difficult to clean up. And so it's better to just start with less. And add a little bit as you go. Okay, and then just brush that over the surface. If you need to add more once you've brushed it over the whole thing. Just add a little bit, brush it out, and see if you need more. And then when you're done with all three of them, pop it into the UV light for 15 minutes. Um, and then we can finish this up. Okay, and here is how they should look once they are out of the UV light. And so now we are going to drill them. So I'm going to start by drilling these ones first. I'm just going to pop a little hole right at the top. Like so. Okay, and just go back through the other way. Make sure it's nice and clean. There we go. Repeat for that one. Okay, then I've just popped them to the side. Now I'm just busy deciding how I want this to be. I think that's good. Just going to drill a hole in the top of this one too. There we go. And then we are ready to assemble. So for these ones I am just going to bring over a bale, just going to pop these in, like so, and then we can attach the air wire to that, there's those two. And then for this one I also have a bale along with the cord that I want to use, so I'm just going to pop this over the board and I'll just squeeze my hands first and then finish it off with the pliers and there we go that's it for the donut um, now I'm just going to finish with the earrings All we need to do is just open that up and attach and of course close and repeat with the other one. And there we go, that's basically it. Very simple, very easy. So I'll just bring over the other piece now. So that's basically it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, please let me know in the comments below. And please do remember to check out my Etsy shop for our silk screens. We have released them uh, fairly, um, only just a little while ago. So there's quite a few designs on there, but we are continually adding new ones every single month. So be sure to check them out. Also, we do draw these uh, by hand, so if you're interested in designs, let us know in the comments below what sort of designs you'd like to see, and maybe we can do a silk screen for it, so be sure to let us know in the comments below. Also, suggestions for, the t for tutorials, let us know in the comments below as well, and we will get around to those as well. And as always, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.